Hello and welcome back to the house in Fata Morgana. Let's jump right back into the story and see what's going to happen with Bestia. Ravenous Hunger Water. 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 I just need some water. Just some water. Will they attack me again? No, if I ask. Did they look like they were open to requests? No, they tried to kill me. They almost killed me. They threw stones at me. They did more than that. Hoes and knives and sticks and I don't know. Things I didn't even recognize. They hit me with them. They tried to kill me. They looked like they were going to kill me. I almost died. I'm on the verge of death even now. My throat is sore. It hurts. No, I don't feel pain anymore. It burns? Does it burn? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything. I'm so thirsty. Water. I just need water. Will they not even give me any water? Why? Why not? Because... Because I'm a bestia? Because I'm a beast. Because I don't need to live. Because I don't deserve to live. A beast's meant to die. Am I meant to die? I'm thirsty. My stomach is probably empty too. I don't know anymore, but I'm hungry. So very hungry. I can't take it. 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 Water. I just need water. Just some water. What must I do to get some water from that village? A well. A well. I can find a well. There has to be a well. I know what that is. I know what a well is. What else do I know? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. I have no memories. I have nothing. I am a beast. A newborn beast. Mm. Mm. <sighs> what is this? It's buried. It's red. It feels rough. There was something. There is something. Something I know. I know this. This is mine. It must be. It's mine. I know this. It's mine. I know. How to use it. How to touch it. How to hold it. How to swing it. I know. What this is. What to do with it. What it's for. I know. That with this. I can fight on evil footing with them. A beast. Beast, beast, 
I am a beast. Beasts are meant to be ridiculed, to be hated, to be resented, to die. But I want to live, which means I have only one option, only one way, only one. With this, I must overthrow those who tormented me. I can do that. Water and food. I can get that. I can get anything. <laughs> Who could that be at this time of night? Who's there? You shouldn't answer it. It's probably a beggar or something. These are dangerous times. You're right. How unpleasant a world we live in that we should have to fear for our lives in this little village. Unpleasant indeed. I hope things go back to how they used to be soon enough. Uh, you just don't give up. Who's there? You're not coming in without identifying yourself. This is rather strange. What's going on, Dad? Oh, did the noise wake you? There's nothing to worry about, son. Go back to bed. It'll quiet down soon. The door! Huh? the best year. Run, you hear me? Go out the back door and let everyone know. Shout as loud as you. Uh, ah! What is this? What's going on? Why? There's blood? Why? It can't be. What the... How did this... Why? Why? Mom? Dad? Bestia? Bestia? The Bestia? You... Why would you... What's the matter? You sound like you're in pain. Would you like me to fetch you some water? Water. D don't touch me. Keep your hands off me. Not a particularly restful sleep, I take it. You. Where are you hiding? Why did you disappear? You were always around before. Um... Show yourself. Show yourself immediately. Where are you? Show yourself! And if I did, what would you do then? Kill me? You thirst for blood. To instill fear. 
to live in the face of your desire, others' lives are meaningless. That's the kind of man you are. Or do you intend to pretend that you never did anything of the sort? Shut up. Shut up. Shut up! I couldn't help it. I wanted to live. I didn't want to die. Yes. Yes, indeed. That's the kind of man you are. You kill for your own sake. <laughs> you kill a child's mother and father as he stands there watching. They... they tried to kill me first. All of them. The entire village. Calm yourself. Who are you speaking to? Please, get a hold of yourself. Silence. Stop talking. Keep... keep your hands off me. Oh, I'll kill you too. I'm a beast who will kill anyone. Calm down. It's all right. Everything's all right. It's all right. I... I'm a... I'm a beast. Beasts kill. And so I kill. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe slower. I will not harm you, and you will not harm me. It's all right. Put your arms around me. See for yourself that I am not afraid of you. Mm. 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 This is brilliant. What are you clinging on to this woman for? Is that the only way you can maintain your grip on yourself? It would be so, so much easier if you simply accepted the fact that you're a beast. You've always, always been one, haven't you? Can a beast cultivate love like a human? Weep in sorrow like a human? No, they cannot. It's utterly ridiculous. Sh shut up! Shut up! Shut up! It's all right. I'm right here. I'm right here. Can I... Can I... trust you? Of course. This little facade will be over soon enough. It will end at that woman's hands. Because that's what she's here for. To crush your soul into tiny pieces. I wonder... Oof, an intense start there. <laughs> wow. We met three years ago. I thought for sure I would get burned. Sitting beneath the hellishly pounding sun on that sweltering summer day. It's only ever on days such as those that we end up having lunch outside. Not just out of the house, but literally outside. The heat was searing. I could hear the cry of seagulls from the restaurant's terrace. I 
remember that day clear as crystal. Ah yes, I have to say, the fruit here is spectacular. And I love that they give you so much meat. Though, I thought my gut would explode the first time I saw it. <laughs> Wouldn't you say, son? Indeed. Yes, it is. By the look on your face, I'd say you're already feeling it. You're not going to make it in this line of work without a big old stomach, son. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of this country's food. One taste and you never forget it. I'd like to bring the entire cuisine back with me if I could. This is the first time we've seen you in how long? And you're talking about food? The first thing you asked when you arrived was, is the restaurant by the seaside still open, for goodness sake? Is your heart made out of stone? What? Would you prefer we discuss the mundane? Why don't we talk about market developments and our spices inventory? That's not what I meant. Hmm. It's hot. My parents' relationship is on thin ice, but the air feels like it's on fire. It's much too hot. My dad loves the seaside restaurant. It actually specializes in fish, but he always asks for meat. Though always isn't very often. He's out of the country most of the time, so we rarely eat together as a family. For that reason, I can usually put up with a little heat for a family gathering. Sorry. Today, however, is awkward. Go on, son. Dig in. You can't find food this good back home. Uh, as you say. Every course, the table is lined with meat, meat, meat. Even I'm starting to feel heavy in the gut. At this rate, I might turn into meat myself. Wait, technically you are. <laughs> hmm. hmm, what kind of meat would I turn into though? I guess beef, maybe, if the meal keeps on like this. Just how much food are you planning to order? I can't believe you. Why did I ever marry you? Come now, we're out as a family. You could stand to be a little more pleasant. And who do you think is making me unpleasant? N no, 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 no. No, 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 no. to time our eyes meet. But every time they do, we both avert our gaze. This goes on throughout the meal. My father invited him to lunch. Dad introduced him as his right hand, so I assume he's also a trader. His eyes are somewhat narrow, his posture perfectly upright. He looks very no-nonsense and not especially affable. Frankly, he kind of scares me. Hey, Dad? Are we going anywhere after lunch? I figured, since we're all together, maybe we could take a walk or visit some place out of town. 
Hmm? Ah, yes. Hmm. Actually, I've got a letter to write after this. A letter to one of the big wigs back home. So I'm planning to head straight back to the trading post. Oh, okay. Can't say I'm especially surprised. What do you want me to do? It's work and it has to be done. If I could get an audience with him in person, maybe this wouldn't be necessary, but that's not possible. So I have no choice but to write a long, long letter. Oh yes, Pauline. If you're going on a walk, bring him along. I'm sure he's tired of putting up with me day in and day out. What? Oh, no, I'm... Hold on now. Could you please leave Pauline out of this? She has things she needs to do too. What's the big deal? You want to know about an area? Ask someone who lives there. That's the best way to learn. Besides, you'll stick out like a sore thumb wandering around on your own, son. But I couldn't. Um, I... You don't mind, do you, Pauline? Uh, not at all. God, you are the most inconsiderate man. Mom says, then leans in and whispers to me. Listen to me. Do not let your guard down around a foreign man. My father is, as a matter of fact, a foreigner. And the man he brought to lunch is from the same country. It's so odd, they're all just saying foreigner, but no one is stating which country exactly, so you just have to guess like based on names, maybe? a bit odd to I don't know how to pinpoint it and I get that it's supposed to be not necessarily the real world but like a fantasy setting or you know like its own world and we don't need any specifics necessarily but I don't know it just confuses me sometimes um this is a park Indeed it is. It is a park. My assignment to show this man around town is, to be honest, going quite horribly. This is a park. No, just... no. Couldn't you come up with anything better, Pauline? But I don't know anything about the history of this park. In fact, I don't know much of anything about this town's history. I just sort of walk around every day, not really paying it much mind. Wouldn't someone more knowledgeable make a better guide? Uh, well, maybe your father had other ulterior motives there than you acting as a guide. I can't do it. Don't ask this of me. Also, he... He doesn't talk very much and he's got this perpetually stern look on his face. He really does scare me. Don't worry, Mom. Your daughter won't mistakenly fall for a foreigner. At any rate, regardless of how I feel, I am still technically his guide. I've got to try a little harder. 
though I know it won't be easy. And then, uh, there's a fountain. There is indeed a fountain. There's a fountain. Again. No. Seriously, Pauline? He has eyes. I'm sorry, I'm not much of a guide. Maybe my dad could show you around instead. N no, don't worry about it. I think you're doing just fine. In fact, I'm sorry you got roped into this. I doubt you much enjoy having to walk around town beside... Um, someone like me what no that's not it at all oh is that so I'm glad to hear it here's an idea rather than guide me how about this why don't you show me what you usually do the places you normally go Do you really want to see that? I'd prefer to see the town through the eyes of a resident. To see it for what it is, instead of what makes good sightseeing. Uh, Alright then. Um, I often get ham sandwiches from the shops near here. Having lunch on the wall by the fountain is the most wonderful thing. Look over there. See the butcher shop and the bakery next to it? I buy bread from the bakery, bring it to the butcher, get a few slices of ham and put it on the bread. It's absolutely to die for. <laughs> but you just had a huge lunch. I'm not getting one right now. Also, please don't think I'm as carnivorous as my dad. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to imply any such thing. Jeez. Wait, hold on. Did he just smile? He did. It was a small one, but he did. He can actually smile. Being human, that should be obvious, but it's kind of strange seeing him do it. Maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to get along. Even just a little bit? Um, do you mind if I ask you a question? Sure, go right ahead. Could you tell me about your home country? I've asked that, but you won't tell me very much. Uh. Come on, how about it? I'm really curious. He probably doesn't know very much himself. What? About his, uh, his own homeland. Some don't. What do you... How about that fountain? I'd like to get a closer look at it. At the spot you say you like to sit. Oh, okay. What was that just now? Did he dodge my question? Is there something there he doesn't want to get into? I mean, probably. But also that's true. I mean, even if you're originally from somewhere, especially if you moved away from the country when you were young, you don't necessarily know much. Depending on, yeah, your whole upbringing and 
Maybe also the past of your country. From this angle, it looks like the fountain's sitting atop the ocean. Ah, yeah, it does. It does. If you want, we can go to the beach. It's a straight walk from here. No, I like this view. The sea is a pretty color here. You can clearly see the white of the fountain upon it. The sea is a different color than the fountain? It is. In fact, the sea is often changing colors itself, but out on the water it can be easy to overlook. It can be the color of emeralds, or deep blue like sapphire, or almost black like obsidian. The sea has a face, and with it, many expressions. Huh. I'd like to see that. Maybe I'll ask Dad and get him to take me out on his ship. You have quite the adventurous spirit. Not many women say they want to ride a ship. You think? I want to go everywhere I haven't been before. I want to see for myself that the world extends beyond this town. Uh, that's a fine ambition. Hopefully the time will come when anyone can have access to a ship with relative ease. He actually smiles quite a bit, I guess. And we seem to be talking pretty comfortably, too. He's a lot more friendly than he looks. He appears almost noble, the way he looks out at the sea, his gaze steadfast and unwavering. Oh dear, that was close. He almost deceived me. He's a foreign man, and I'm simply his guide. You mustn't think you've grown close to him just because you were able to hold a brief conversation. By the way... Hmm? Uh, pardon me, yes? That outfit you're wearing. What, this? Oh yes, it's absolutely splendid. <laughs> My dad brought it back for me. It's of a peculiar design with unusual accessories. The moment I saw it, I said, oh my. Oh my, I said. It's so pretty, I want to show it off to everyone. I... I see. Oh, it's just so magnificent. He actually has a decent eye for clothing. I guess he has more in that head of his than meat. Oh, let me... Wait, can I... Yeah. Show you the dress in its full glory, that is... I mean, my first impulse is to say it's not historically accurate, but then again, I only have very limited knowledge of that. Mostly from YouTubers. <laughs> And it depends on the area as well. But it seems quite, you know. Oh. Actually, um. Hmm? I brought back that outfit. Huh? When. When I heard I was going to meet my boss's daughter, I thought it would be best if I brought some kind of gift. So I had a tailor imitate the style of my homeland. I'm delighted it's to your liking. Well, well, hold on a second. 
Yes. So you're saying these clothes I'm fawning over were given to me by you and you had them made for me? Indeed. And completely oblivious, here I am wearing them now. More precisely, you've been wearing them since lunch. Why didn't you say something before? This is humiliating. I want to bury my head in the sand. But I thought you liked them. I do, I do indeed, but... Having never met you, I wasn't sure what colors you liked, but... I'm, uh... I was relieved to see you wearing them. And they look nice on you. He says with a smile. He's always standing up perfectly straight, always looking stern and no-nonsense, and he kind of scares me. But he is a gentleman. I, I'm going to go change. What? I'm going to go change. I'll be back in five seconds, so just wait there. Ah. Uh, five seconds is infeasible. Oh God, help me, Mom. I really, really need your help. Because my heart just skipped a beat. For a foreign man. Yeah, get over it. <laughs> Oh, is that so? Very well then. Oh, no, thank you for the information. I really appreciate it. And don't worry about me, I'll keep safe. Goodbye. Shortly before I arrived at the village, a beast appeared. It killed a number of villagers and then disappeared. Ever since then, the village hasn't been itself. There's a cloud of gloom hovering over it, fear visible in everyone's eyes. At first, I thought their fear was of the beast returning. But that's not quite right. Their troubles with the beast are, in fact, still ongoing. Ah, Javi! Hey. I hear you were asking around about the beast. Yeah. Talking about the beast is taboo. People are going to push you away even harder now. Though, I guess, you are leaving in a few days. It's just to come back to the last episode when they were going out on the sea. I actually thought that would, that might continue a bit more, like they would find something or maybe come across the mansion already. Interesting, so they didn't. That was just a fun a fun little boat ride and then they came back and she continued searching. Okay. People going missing. Your beast problem is still ongoing, isn't it? Huh. After asking around, I'm beginning to piece things together. When the beast first appeared, you chased it away. However, later, the beast came back, killing villagers. Uh, 
After that, the bees disappeared, but villagers began disappearing too. Once a week, someone would just be gone. And even as the weeks passed, none of them ever returned. Once a week is very often. Jeez. The people of the village think the beast is responsible. They think it's kidnapping villagers. That's right. This village is under the beast's curse. So you're better off forgetting about this place and the savage beast that dwells nearby. You don't belong in a place like this. Go back to your hometown, where it's peaceful. That's the kind of life you deserve. Javi. What? I want you to be honest with me about something. Where does... I won't tell you. Why not? They told me... That you... That you would know where the beast is, Javi. I heard from the other villagers that you once chased the beast. Sure you didn't mishear him? No, I'm positive. You know where the beast ran off to, where its hideaway is. You chased after it, found its den, and then you came back. That's what I heard. Didn't you? Why did you keep that from me? When you told me about the beast, I asked you to tell me everything you knew, Javi. But you brushed me off, said you didn't know anything. Said that I should talk to someone else. When in reality, you know more about it than anyone else. Tell me, why? Why did you hide that from me? What were you thinking? As you watched me frantically asking around the village for more information. Were you enjoying yourself? Tell me, why are you always so mean to me? Shut the hell up! Like I could tell you. Like I could actually tell you that. What did the village tell you about me? Did it go something like this? That the kid couldn't even take revenge for his parents? That he's a damn coward? I'm sure you heard that one plenty from everyone. And now you think... That I'm a coward too. I don't... Yeah. It's true. I went after the beast. I chased it down the night it killed my parents. Hiding around back, I saw it slip into the forest. So I went after it, chasing it until I reached its den. I despised that bestia with everything I had. It murdered my mom and dad. murdered my friends, a kindly priest, every decent person in town. I wanted... 
I needed to get revenge for what it had done. It was my duty to bring retribution upon the beast that stole everything from me. So I... I tried to confront the bestia. But... I couldn't do it. Not only could I not stand up to it, as soon as it turned around and I saw its eyes, its bloodshot eyes and black irises, I couldn't move. Javi. Yeah, that's right. I was a coward. I watched as it killed my parents and even followed it home. But I couldn't do anything. Anything except run, flee, screaming in terror. That was all I could do. Javi, that doesn't make you a coward. If the beast really was that terrifying, but I was supposed to stand up to it. That was the rest. That's what the rest of the village would have wanted. For someone to eradicate the Bastia. When I came back, having accomplished nothing, everyone was so harsh. You coward. What did you even go out there for? Constant ridicule. What right do they have to? If they really want him gone, they could all go together and... No one's got that kind of courage left. Like, I get that, but then they can't just blame it on you. If no one's got the courage, then it's not like you're the only coward there. And it's, it's not even cowardice, like, if he is really a beast. And, and Javi is still just a kid, isn't he? And however long did this happen? That long ago? Oh, jeez. They're all waiting for someone else to speak up. Someone to stand up and say, let's go kill that beast. But no one has the guts to take that initiative. It could have been me, but... The moment I fled back to the village in fear, I lost that qualification. You think... That was just me being mean? Huh? That I didn't tell you where the beast dwells. Do you think that was just me harassing you? I've seen the beast. I know how scary it is. And I know how dangerous it is. And you think I'd tell you where it is? I know good and well what you're thinking that the guy you're looking for might have been taken by him. And you want to go to its den to see if he's there. Knowing that, do you really think I'd tell you? If you go, you'll... It'll... Kill you. You don't have any evidence anyway. Nothing that points to that guy being taken by the beast. But... You don't need to put your life on the line for something like that. Something so uncertain. Even if... Even if by some chance he was taken by the beast. There's no way he'd be alive.
That's what the beast does. No one comes back alive. But... You came back alive, Ravi. That's what I've been thinking before as well, actually, when the beast came to his house. Which means, there's no saying for sure either way. That's just because I ran away immediately, but... Even if he did manage to escape, that's all the more reason not to check the beast's den. I... I want to know for sure whether he's alive or dead. Somewhere in a little corner of my heart, part of me thinks that he might just actually be dead. I have to have faith, but I'm so close to cracking, to thinking he won't ever come back to me. Then why don't you just give up on him already? Without knowing for sure, I can't let go. I'll debate with myself forever, until I die an old lady, about whether or not he's still alive. That's how my life will end. You want closure? You want to know for sure whether he's alive or dead, right? And even if he is dead, you'll be satisfied just knowing it? Right. Which is why I want to, at least, follow any possible leads. There might not be anything saying he's there. But it is true that remains of the ship he was on washed up in this village. If he wandered the area and ended up at the beast's den, where he was killed, then I'll let go. So please, Javi, tell me where the beast dwells. Make this the last time. Huh? Even if you find no trace of him at the beast's den. Even if you don't figure out whether he's alive or dead. You'll give up your search for him. You'll assume he's dead. If you don't reach some conclusion, you'll just keep searching, keep going to dangerous places, keep putting yourself at risk. I want you to stop that. To stop, go back to your town and live a normal life. Settle on an answer. If you can promise me that, I'll tell you where the beast's den is. Okay, I promise. This will be the last place I look. Two more things. First, I'm going with you. What? But I thought, isn't it dangerous? Exactly. I can't let you go alone. Javi. I have to go with you and make sure you don't do anything stupid. Alright, fine. 
and the other one is? You will not enter the den. You don't understand just how dangerous the beast is. It knows no mercy. It indiscriminately attacks any human it sees. So you can't let the beast find you. You just examine the den from the outside. And when you're done, back to the village. Understood? You need to promise me this. Okay. Oh, right. One more thing. Huh? I thought it was just two things. This is less of a promise and more something that would be nice. I decided when we make it back to the village, I actually would like if you could take me to your hometown. Javi. I'll figure out some way to get permission. And I'll do my best to not be a burden on you. I'm still just a kid and there's not a whole lot I can do even in a better place. But I'm surprisingly skilled with my hands. If you have work for me, I'll do anything. So, there's that. Yes, yes, of course I will. We'll go back to my hometown together and I'll show you all around. You can get some great ham sandwiches there. We'll eat them together in the park. You've told me that already. <laughs> Are you ever not hungry, lady? Ah, oh, you laughed! You just laughed, Ravi. Uh, whoa, back off. I did not laugh. Nope, you definitely laughed. You're kind of cute when you laugh, Ravi. Come on, do it again. Go on, like this. D shut up, stay back. N stop it, don't touch my cheeks. Bah. I wanted to see it again. I am not your plaything. <laughs> anyway, we set out tomorrow. We will return before it gets dark. You will keep your promises and you will not do anything dangerous. Got it? Promise. Thank you, Javi. I don't need your thanks. Thank you. That thank you is not for him agreeing to tell me where the beast's den is. But because I can see that Ravi's trying to save me. His care calms the turbulent waves that have been crashing inside me. I was always anxious. I always believed. I always thought I'd see him again. But I also recognized that I was practically living a fantasy. I was just too stubborn to admit it. I certainly won't be able to change how I feel immediately. I'll probably continue loving him. Nevertheless, Javi's words resonated comfort and comfortingly within, with me. I can see, if but vaguely, a new path, a new way of life appearing before me. That's what he did for me. I will make this the last time. My final attempt to find him. No matter the outcome, I will stop stubbornly believing he's still alive. And then, I'll find happiness on a different path. 
<sighs> I don't know. I don't know how good that will that will end. Uh, both for Pauline and for Javi. And again, still wondering why Javi did escape the be beast twice without anything happening. Just because he ran away, I don't know. Because we heard that at least the people coming to the mansion, none of them escaped, right? So... Oh no. Bad feeling. Master. Master. Ah, you have awakened. You gave me quite the startle. Do you not remember? You suddenly started staring off into the distance, and you would not respond to anything I said. <laughs> I thought you were playing a prank on me. Your hand? Oh, yes, I did not let go of it. For if I had, we would be in quite the predicament. Someone approaching the mansion, you say? You saw them. Those images were not shown to you by me. Yeah, that's what I've been wondering before, because before also we were seeing Pauline's side of the story not told. Yeah, not as told by the maid. Well, that's strange. If you saw something, then it was by your own powers. But if you think about it, that is nothing unusual. You are, after all, the master of this house. You should, in all actuality, be able to do anything I can do by yourself, master. So, it is very possible you could have knowledge that I do not. Now, let us return to the mansion's tale. That's the thing, though. You're talking about the mansion's tale, but not everything you've shown us, even the parts that the mage did show us, were happening within the mansion. Like, even in the first story, some parts happened, like, out in the town, in, in the church. It was people that resided in the mansion. But, eh? Like, how, how does that work? Like, how far, how far is our reach, <laughs> basically? <laughs> After the second beast paid a visit, Bestia began to destabilize again. The white-haired girl would soothe his heart, but the calm was only ephemeral. He was like a cracked glass ball. If you dropped him, that would be the end. If you put too much force into handling him, he would shatter. He was very difficult to care for. And cracks do not heal. The damage still remains, even if the two sides appear to be held together firmly in place. Furthermore, they slowly, gradually, and without intervention, spread. The beast appeared to be afraid of someone's, someone's voice. He would, on occasion, stare into empty space and shout, cover his ears and groan. One day, he shattered all the windows in the mansion, crushed the silverware, silverware I had just polished to a shine, and destroyed all the mirrors. I assume he did not want to see his beastly self. More. There's more. There's still more that reflects my image. Windows, mirrors, vases, dishes, they all show my reflection. What are you doing? I have no need of anything that reflects me. You can understand that, can't you? 
why? If you're going to cut your hands like that... Tracing the wall with her fingers, the white-haired girl approached Bastia. She stretched her spindly fingers out toward the beast's rugged hands. His hands were wet with blood from his frenzied attempts to destroy anything reflective in the house. Look at all these cuts. Stop. You're going to dirty your hands. Get back. No, I will not. It's no use. No matter how many times you call me human, the mirrors tell another story. Not just the mirrors. Everything reflective shouts beast at me angrily. Look at how precarious I am. It's hideous. Pitiful. I thought it was all over when I protected you from the beast. But that image keeps coming back to me. The sight of another beast clinging onto me. I can hear its voice. It says I was only ever a beast. Voice? Whose voice? So you don't know. So you can't hear it. You are fighting against something beyond the limits of my perception. Fighting? No, if only it were a fight. It speaks the undeniable truth. As I have said before, you are not a beast. You look like me, I am certain of it. Your eyes. What? Your red eyes. They show you nothing, but they show me what I am. They show me the difference between us. Are you afraid of my eyes? If... If my eyes cause you fear, if you can see in them your reflection, then you are welcome to destroy them. Rip them from me with your own hands. I have no need of them, after all. Why would you go so far from me? You... The voice says that you're laughing at me. That deep down, you ridicule me. Do you believe that? After all the time we've spent together. I... I don't know. I'm starting to lose confidence. I believe you. I think I believe you. But I find myself wavering. I'm losing sight of myself. And of you. Of everything. In all my memories, I am a beast. The voice says I was always this way. Which, I suppose, means I am a beast. I can't be anything but. Do not trust the voice. Just me instead. I... I do not want to make another mistake. To do something like run away, because I am so weak-willed. I do not understand this woman. She's so pure-hearted, so beautiful, 
like hope personified. I want to understand, to believe her. I was sure I could do it, but I keep failing. Why am I losing my grip on everything? Are words not enough to convince you? What? Are words not enough to convince you that you are not a beast? Then see for yourself. Feel for yourself. That there is but one difference between us. Well, what are you doing? I assume our skin and our hair and our eyes are different colors. But those do not count as a difference. The only thing that differs between us is our sex. Hold on. In his utter shock, Bestia was frozen in place. And he was right to be surprised. The sound of rustling fabric shook the air in the forlorn mansion. She had placed her hand on the sleeve of her garments and begun to disrobe. Before long, Gaze upon me. She was standing there, completely undressed. Her body was incomparably beautiful. Slender, not an ounce of excess fat on her. The sight of her was impressive, almost divine. Even I let out a gasp when I saw her. See for yourself. This was the first time Bestia had seen the white-haired girl unclothed. Though they slept in the same bed, as I said before, they did not have a physical relationship. She grasped his unmoving hand and guided it toward her. She moved his hand across her flesh, along the curve of her shoulder, down her arm and pressed it against her chest firmly enough for him to feel her beating heart. Do you think this caused a stirring within him? <laughs> Is there any man for whom the touch of a woman's skin would not? Well, yeah, but let's not get into that right now. Especially one so beautiful as her. However, he was not aroused. Why do you think that was? Because a beast cannot lust after a human? I believe you know the answer. Do I? Huh. Mm. Are you crying? Could you smile for me? What? I want to see your smile. Like this? I'm not sure I'm doing a good job. No, you're doing fine. Your smile is so pretty. It calms me, warms my heart. I think I know someone, somewhere, who has that same smile. Okay. That, that didn't really, I don't know, that it calmed him? Fine. But I don't think that really um, worked as well as the girl. 
thought in in terms of like uh, proving that he's not a beast. Huh. But I'm kind of relieved that even she is still. Um, she, she's kind of proving my doubts, you know, because I'm still not quite sure if he's an actual physical beast or not. Or if it's just body dysmorphia, basically. Huh. Thank you for seeing me off. Don't mention it. I learned so much about this town thanks to you. You made my stay here quite enjoyable. What's the matter? You're looking rather glum. I wonder... Huh? I wonder why the sea exists. I was born in a port town, so it's always been there for me. This huge, never-ending, expansive, magnis magnificent ocean. Far too big for a single, measly little human like me to cross. It's so pretty. It is. I feel like I understand why you like the sea. But right now, I can't help wondering why God created such an enormous sea. Why he didn't make the world smaller. Um, I'm sorry, I'm talking nonsense. Not at all. I'll probably be back eventually. That's just part of the job. And will you have lunch at the seaside restaurant again? <laughs> Quite likely. And I bet it'll be mostly neat too. Was your stomach able to handle it? I'll train up for next time. <laughs> your ship is going to embark soon. Yeah. Will people get mad you're not helping them prepare? Most likely. Then you should hurry off. Yeah. Pauline. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank you again. Uh, I appreciate you taking so much time to show me around. Is that all? Um, no. I don't know why, but I was considering leaving without telling you this. I'd like you to tell me. I'd feel better if you turned me down. My homeland is only getting more isolated. Unlike your country, mine is not eager to associate with the rest of the world. I probably don't even have their patronage anymore. What I'm saying is that I have absolutely no stability. I can't even say for sure whether I'll be back. So... You're right. There's nothing but obstacles. 
I'm sure my mom would be opposed as well. But I've fallen for you. The way you look staring out at the sea. The shape of your lips when you smile at me. The kindness in your voice. The more time I spend with you, the deeper I fall in love with you. The whole world could separate us. And these feelings would not change. Well, damn. You beat me to it. <laughs> if I'd waited, I don't think you would have ever gotten, in gotten to it. I'll say it myself too. I love you, Pauline. I fell for you the moment I first saw you. I promise, we will meet again. Mm -hmm. I promise, I'll be waiting. Thank you. It's visible in both of our eyes. This love, strong enough to wash away all our tribulations. It's all right there, plain as day in each of our eyes. Mine and his. That's so sweet and so heartbreaking knowing what's happened to him. <laughs> Oof. I don't think the next section will be short. So I think I'm going to end it here for today and I'm sorry, I'm also really curious about how everything will turn out, but still I'm going to save it here, a world apart. Mm. Yeah, oof. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. As always, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, yeah, do you uh, maybe have any input on what their home countries are supposed to be? Like, I think I, I read somewhere that the mansion is supposed to be somewhere in France, but then the names kind of don't make sense. The ones that we had so far. I don't know. But also, I mean, over over time, over his... like, with history, uh, things might have changed. I don't know. Still very intriguing to me at least. I hope you enjoy it and yeah, until next time. Bye bye.